I'm very proud that my family, all of them, my children and my wife in the past, have all been very much involved in assisting in, a, in many, many different charitable organizations. I was brought up in a home that charity was very important. And fortunately, I met a woman that was the same, my wife, and my children have come along and they are following the footsteps of their mother and father and grandparents because I believe it is so important to help, especially charities that are helping the needy of some kind. I guess from a very young age, from a young boy, I was always involved in some type of charity because I always felt, uh, I guess it gave me a satisfaction to see other people happy and satisfied. ProAction is an organization that I founded a number of years ago. I uh, was reading articles in the paper about the problems that the police department and the police officers were having with many of the kids in town in areas like Cabbage Town and Jane Finch area and so forth. And so I called up the police chief at the time, Bill McCormick, and, uh, and I recommended and suggested to him that I be able or capable uh, or would try to go out and raise funds so that police officers would have funds to be able to go out and organize these young people by sponsoring hockey teams, baseball teams, taking kids on fishing trips, uh, any way at all that the police officer could make a, a relationship with the people from those areas. It's still around, it's grown, it's gotten bigger, it's expanded into some other cities, and I believe that the police department and, uh, speak and think uh, uh, very highly of it and that it's done a lot of good work in the community. If you really believe that you're doing good, you do it. I believe you have to like a business deal, you have to make a plan, you have to know what you're doing, and you just charge ahead and people will follow if they see the right things happen. So everybody follows success. Everybody wants to follow success. The year that I was married, I was 21, and I borrowed the $1,500 uh, that I had to put down on the equipment and fixtures. So I actually built it, and I ran it, and all I knew is I had to give the best food and, uh, that I knew how and the best service that I knew how. And it was a little restaurant up on Avenue Road um, near Wilson, and it became very, very successful and became the restaurant of North York at the time. Then I expanded it. I opened up other many restaurants. I guess all in all, I've probably opened up over a couple of hundred restaurants. I've been involved in many charitable organizations of displaced persons, uh, bringing people over from Europe, as you probably are not aware, but the Macedonians were never permitted to speak their own language. Greeks always said they had to speak Greek. They would prison them. And believe it or not, there was tongues cut out to set examples. So at the end of the last world war, the Partisan War in Northern Greece, the uh, Americans were coming in and bombing Northern Greece at that time. And it gave Greece the opportunity to get rid of these Macedonian kids that were just born, the new generation as they were called, five-year-olds, three-year-olds, eight-year-olds, four-year-olds, etc. And they loaded them up on trucks and they would drive them to the border, to the communist border of Yugoslavia or Bulgaria and just drop them at the border. And then these children were taken by the communists from wherever point they were dropped off at the border to places either in Yugoslavia or Poland or Russia or Czechoslovakia or Romania and whatnot. So in 1984, when the Olympics were in Sarajevo, I decided with my wife to go to the Olympics. 
So with the full intent that we would try and visit these people I'm talking about, these refugees' children. So we contacted many of them through others and so forth. And I finally invited about 500 of them down to Skopje, Macedonia a week later, of which I put them all up together, either at relatives' places or hotels, etc., and so forth. The saddest part would be that kids would get up on stage at the hotel that I had, and they'd say, I'm John Bito. Is my, does anybody know where my sister is? <laughs> Somebody would offer, I'm your sister. <laughs> Anyways, so I decided then in 88 to invite all the refugee children that I could in my two mass doing it. And I did, that was in 88. So we had approximately 20,000 showing from all over Australia, Germany, you name it, Canada, America. And the same thing happened. Kids would go up on stage and say, I'm John Bitov. Is there any other Bitovs in the crowd? And somebody told her, I'm a Bitov. I always felt those who give will receive. My mother was a, a very big believer in that, and I always preached it. And to this day, I've, I've, I've said it many times to my children, and I say it to, to different people all the time. I truly do believe those who give will receive, as long as they do it with their heart.